At the ASEAN China Summit, held on September 6th in Jakarta, Chinese Premier Li Qiang affirmed, China has preserved peace and tranquility in Southeast Asia. In order to manage our differences, it is very important to avoid picking sides. It's also important to head off confrontations between blocs and try to prevent a new Cold War. Disagreements and disputes among countries should be handled properly. The pressing agenda at the Jakarta meetings is the growing apprehension among ASEAN members regarding China's heightened assertive activities in the South China Sea. Several ASEAN members have staked conflicting claims with China in this crucial trade corridor. The Philippines president was vocal about the risky maneuvers, terming them as unilateral attempts to alter the status quo in the South China waters. Referencing recent events, Marcos Jr. stated, just last month, a Beijing ship used a water cannon on a Filipino vessel on a resupply mission to a Philippine outpost. In a call for structured conduct in the maritime domain, he added, we must emphasize that practical cooperation in the maritime domain can only flourish with an enabling environment of regional peace, security, stability, and good international law. The Philippines will always continue to strive to maintain ASEAN as a competitive and integrated regional economy. When the South China Sea issue arose during the ASEAN Japan Summit, leaders highlighted the need for a congenial environment in the region. ASEAN and Japan have agreed to form a strategic comprehensive partnership beyond ceremonial formalities and more than mere pleasantries, instead in a tangible concrete cooperation that is mutually beneficial. Before we dive deeper, consider joining our creative journey on Patreon. Your support amplifies our mission to deliver top-notch content. Now, let's get back to our discussion. The potential risk of getting ensnared in major power conflicts has led ASEAN to engage with leaders from the US, Japan, South Korea, Australia, and India. US Vice President Kamala Harris articulated the U.S. stance, stating, The United States has an enduring commitment to Southeast Asia and more broadly to the Indo-Pacific. We are a proud Pacific power and the American people have a profound stake in the future of the Indo-Pacific. She further emphasized both nations' shared interests in upholding the rules-based international order against China's unlawful maritime claims and provocative actions. Beijing expresses its concerns. Amid the prevailing disputes and formation of potential blocs, Beijing is wary. Chinese Premier Li Qiang pointed out, disagreements and disputes may arise between countries due to misperceptions, diverging interests, or external interferences. He further stressed the importance of avoiding a new Cold War and handling differences aptly. China's recent release of a 10-dash line map showing constructions in the South China Sea has been a point of contention. Addressing this, Philippine President Marcos stated, The Philippines firmly rejects misleading narratives that frame the disputes in the South China Sea solely through the lens of strategic competition between two powerful countries. Several ASEAN members have repudiated the map signaling an assertion of Chinese ownership over expanded territories in the South China Sea. Still, some members maintain strong diplomatic, business, and military ties with China. The tumultuous situation in Myanmar, especially the aftermath of the 2021 military coup, was another key topic. While ASEAN leaders expressed concern over the lack of progress towards peace, Kamala Harris indicated that the U.S. would continue exerting pressure on the Myanmar junta. South Korean President Yoon suk Yeol pledged collaboration with Japan and China to strengthen ties. Issues like the Fukushima wastewater and China-Japan disputes were also discussed. 
Amidst ongoing tensions between the US and China, Indonesia reassured that ASEAN would not be a battleground for superpower rivalries. Excellencies, in terms of geography, Japan and ASEAN are part of Asia. This is our home where we grow and take shelter. Therefore, we have enormous responsibility to keep our region in a peaceful, stable and prosperous state. The ASEAN summit unveiled the delicate tapestry of global geopolitics, with countries treading cautiously amidst major power plays. In conclusion, I believe as leaders we must address global challenges of today while also investing in a long-term vision. We must look 10, 20, 30 years out and measure our current steps against that vision. As tensions simmer and alliances form, the emphasis on dialogue, mutual respect and collaboration remains paramount in ensuring regional stability and global peace. That wraps up our deep dive into the ASEAN summit's intricate proceedings. In these tumultuous times, the importance of collaboration and understanding cannot be overstated. Make sure to subscribe for more updates and insights on global affairs. Let's journey through this evolving geopolitical landscape together.